Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome back to Chatomics. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how to choose a bioinformatics tool if you have a specific task to perform. It's very common to see multiple tools that are developed for the same task. But how do you choose it? So spoilers alert, it is not where is it published. Even it is published in fancy journal, I'm not necessary as you use it. And it's also not how well it performs in those benchmark papers. So the first thing I consider is how easy is it to install. So can I install it via Conda? Or if it's an R package, like can I install it uh, from CRAN or Bioconductor? Or at least through GitHub? Because if I cannot even install it, uh, how can I use it? Just this is the number zero task for any bioinformatics analysis is to install the tools. And sometimes it can take me just half a day just to install uh, difficult to install tools because it may have a lot of dependencies, for example. So after you install it, how easy is it to use it? Right? So if it's on command line, there should be good default parameters and well-defined input and output. If it's in R or Python, there should be like wrapper functions to avoid complicated uh, code base. Okay, and that's actually closely tied to how well uh, those tools are documented. For example, if I go to the GitHub page, and there is bare documentation. So I will not use it, right? And if I do not know how to use it, I cannot use it, no, no matter how well uh, they perform in those benchmark papers, right? And also through documentation, you will see how easy is it to use the uh, tool, right? Whether it's like, well explained, what kind of input you, you need for this tool and what kind of output you will generate for the tool. And to be honest, many times if I go to some of the tools, uh, GitHub page, I don't even quite understand uh, what actually uh, this tool is going to generate. So, uh, so it's really hard for me to use those tools, right? Okay. So is it well maintained? So this is different than what uh, is it well are documented because you will surely have problems or questions during the use of the tool, right? Are the authors responsive, for example, in GitHub issues? Because it's very common that a tool is developed in a lab, but the first author of that lab will leave the lab and maybe go on to pursue a postdoc or go to an industry, and no one in the lab is maintaining the package then it's really hard if you have a, if you have a problems no one can help you so i will sh show you one uh, several good examples of well maintained packages in the end so next is it from a reputable lab for example i have used bwa minimap2 minimap from Henley's lab and I know it's a very good lab and any tools come from his lab, it's, it should be good. So I, at least I will give it a try. For, also from uh, Aaron Quinlan's lab, because I've used the bad tools. It's a really nice command line tool uh, to wrangle uh, genomic uh, intervals on command line. And I know it's really good. And anything else that from his lab, I will truly give it a try if I have a specific task on, um, uh, at hand. Okay, there are other uh, examples that I uh, will show you. For example, one of them in R, it's a complex heat map, or uh, to make uh, really beautiful heat maps and cluster profiler is a gene set enrichment uh, analysis tool in R. And SnakeMake is a uh, is a Python extension to write the workflow language to write workflows. So let me just uh, demonstrate a 
complex heat map, for example, using uh, complex heat map. First of all, it's, a, it's an R package, so you can easily install it using bioconductor. So, so usually you should have no problem uh, if you have the right R version uh, that is installed and then install the uh, bioconductor manager and you should be able to install it just via this one single command. Okay, it should be easy to install, right? And if you go to the documentation page, essentially it's a whole book actually. I think this is probably uh, rendered using a book down our package. And you look at, yeah, there's so, there are a lot of chapters here and each chapter has a lot, lot of details uh, in how, uh, how to use this GitHub, uh, Git, uh, how to use this uh, package. So, okay. And if you go to a GitHub, and this is the GitHub page. And if you go to the issues, um, and you see there are like already almost a thousand issues that, is, uh, that are closed. And you see many of the issues are quite recent. So you know um, the author is actively maintained this package. And of course, if you go to BioContact that you see here, uh, you can look at the rank, uh, how popular this package is among all the BioContact packages in BioConductor. So it's ranked 48. So it's a really popular tool, right? And it's been in BioConductor for nine years. Okay, so the other tool, our, uh, tool called Cluster Profile to do a uh, enrichment analysis and you see here it's ranked 38 so among 2000 uh, packages and it's been there all for 13 years so you, uh, and of course the documentation is also of, uh, of top niche so if you look at here and you see actually there is a whole book as well uh, just for the documentation, for example, the vignettes here. So if you go here, so there's a whole book just for how to use uh, the class profile. Okay, so that's how essentially I choose whether I will use a tool for a specific task. But of course, the first thing you want to know is even even how do I know those tools exist? Right, you may just Google. For me, the other uh, way to stay current on those bioinformatics is uh, be on social media, for example, Twitter or LinkedIn, and uh, follow those pa uh, papers or follow uh, the professors who are doing uh, bioinformatics, and you know what tools that are available uh, that are published recently that may be useful for your research. Okay. I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this review, today's video and uh, click uh, subscribe if you like this. And I will see you next time.